Each gate, every one of the gates is a single pearl. 12 pearls, 12 gates. But they're all of the same pearl. It's not like they're different pearls. It's not like there's different salvations that are available. It's not like there's a different way that all lead the same to the same way. They're all of one pearl. They're all talking about the same one. There's really only one person wherein we could be saved. The entrance into this city costs everyone everything they've had or, or will have to get into this. It costs you everything to get into this city. Everyone comes in by the appointed means. The gates are for the entrance into the city. No one that gets in any other way is going to be accepted. And the one that climbed up the wall and came, he wasn't accepted. He didn't get to stay either. Only the ones that come the appointed way. Now, Jesus talked about this. Um, remember in Matthew 13, he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking girdly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, there is a sense of which we're, you were seeking goodly pearls. You came across this one. What was the, what was the price tag on that? Everything you had. Everything. It, that's, and even then, you could say that um, God had a little bit of grace there. See, there's another parable. Remember, the man found a treasure in a field. And he went, and for joy, he sold out, and he bought the field. Couldn't really buy the treasure. But see, this is, this is talking about this, the same salvation. You, you, obviously, it's not by works of righteousness that we've done. But see, it's because we believe that he's done all things that we couldn't do under the law of Moses. We've been accepted in the beloved. The man, he was seeking. And yet he didn't find many pearls, did he? found one pearl. Of great price, great price. Well, the preciousness of our entrance into the kingdom of God, it can't be overstated. You can't talk too much about the time that God extended grace to you and he became real to you and you entered into the kingdom of God. See, this is a, this is a great thing that God's done. And uh, to forget that, well, we'll remember what Peter said about those that forgot that they were purged from their old sins. That leads to... Um, that leads to you um, to bad things. Actually, the entrance itself has power in, the, in your remembrance, in your mind, as you recall the day that God delivered you and set your set your feet on on the, on the road, on the highway to heaven, and and you you started this journey towards glory. See, there's power in remembering that because this was a work of the Lord. Reminds me, remember when when Samson. He, he, he went, he was going down, and he, he, a lion came up against him, and he slew it like a kid and said, the Spirit of the Lord came on him mightily, and, and he did that. Well, then later, he revisited the place where that happened and got another blessing. Now, it doesn't say the Spirit of the Lord came on him mightily again, but they got honey out of that carcass. Mm -hmm. See, he revisited the thing that God had done and got benefit from it. There again, see, you remember the day that you were first illuminated, and it'll, it'll like invigorate you again or renew you all over again because, see, God did something. Anytime God does something in our life, it's worth remembering. There is a commonality associated with these gates. Even though they're specifically located around the city, all of them lead to the same city, and more specifically, all of them lead to the same place in the city. Now, you know, when, when, um, only those, only those, oh, I'm going to get ahead of my stuff here, but that's okay. Streets are not made to look at. You know, that when, when, when a street's made, it's made because they want you to go someplace. So a street's made to travel on, to traverse on. But see, we don't see streets here. We see a street because there's only one place you're going. 
Yet there's only one destination in this city. There's only one throne. There's only one river. There's only one sea of glass. And the street that here that we see is of pure gold is leading everyone that enters in, everyone that participates in this salvation has one purpose, one mindset. Do they have one goal? It's to know him. See, this is, this, this is captured. Everything about them now is made new. And they're in quest of heaven. Well, none of the gates you'll find in this kingdom lead to a different place. None, see, none of them are a distraction. They all bring into the kingdom the things that God's right, right exactly the place where God wants them to be. Entrance through these gates will deposit every man on the same street. You, you say, well, there's so many different, today it seems like there's so many different places that people are found. And, you know, they call themselves, they put the same label on themselves, they're Christians and yet they don't have any power over sin. They can't really keep anything. In fact, they don't even believe that it's possible to do that. What happened? Well, they didn't enter into this. See, there's something wrong. There's something wrong when a person identifies himself with Christ and yet doesn't have any power from Christ. Can this be right? Can it be that someone could enter in through one of these gates into the city and end up on another street, one that leads to self-satisfaction? Well, to ask the question really answers it. The sinner that repents is made new. It isn't like he might be made new. It isn't like, well, he, maybe, maybe this time it'll work. Every, everyone that is, is born in the Christ Jesus Amen. is made new. Amen. He's a new creation. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Why? Because he's entered in through the gates of the city. He's become one with, with Christ. Entrance, entrance is required. <clears throat> we read about some of the, those that are on the outside. We, we don't want to be associated with them. We don't want to, we don't, in the end, we don't want to be on the outside of this city. Nothing good's happening on the outside of this city. Now, the streets of the city, see, normally streets are not known for their safety or their cleanliness. Streets are just not known. You, you wouldn't want to say, well, I'm going to just go out and sleep in the street. Or I'll just, I'll just decide I'll live in the street. I don't know that anybody would say, well, that's a really, that's a really good, good idea. We're going to do that. We're going to just live out in the street in a cardboard box, and everyone would think that was normal. But see, now this city, now we're talking about a different kind of city here. We're talking about a holy city now. We're talking about a city where even the, the, the street is a place of safety. You don't have to worry about losing anything when you're in the street. Not on this street. Isaiah 60, verse 18 reads, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. This is, this is a different kind of city we're, we've come into. Now see, this city has a single purpose. It's the habitation of God. See, it's not a multi-purpose city. It's not a place for other gods to set up residence and have, have groves for other gods. Not in this city. There's no allowance for that. There's no place for that. There's no other street where you could establish any other kind of government or any kind of, of activity at all. There's one street because it's just one purpose. <clears throat> 